Hello again and welcome to another BZ TV update. I'm Chris Dioscalisi here with Nick Donato and today we're going to be looking at stock idioms, uh, turns of phrases that some investors use to plot their moves throughout the year uh, according to some <laughs> pretty arcane metrics. Um, a lot of these have to do with the time of the year. Uh, two of the most common are of course the January effect and sell in May go away. Uh, Nick, could you elaborate a little bit on those? Yeah, the January effect is pretty easy. Hedge funds are selling into to their losses at the end of the year, trying to get a tax break, and then you see the heavy increase buying at the beginning of the year. So that's a kind of a, a simple one, um, I, but I believe it has not held true the last couple of years. Is that correct? Yeah, that is actually correct. Uh, in 2014 and 2015, uh, the year started off pretty pretty bad and it was sort of a bearish market, but bounced back a bit later in the year. So sort yeah. Of, yeah, so these obviously always don't always come true when it comes to these idioms obviously and then the one in may uh you're obviously selling in may because you know people are taking time off um there's also a lot of uh you know there's been a history of general market uh, market crashes heavy volatile movements so that's one where investors like to say you know sell in may go away for a couple months and then come back in uh, a little bit more on the traditional side um and one that i had never heard about before uh, was uh, sell Rosh Hashanah by Yom Kippur, um, and uh, some of our Jewish, Jewish colleagues have sort of filled me in on the reasoning behind that, but uh, our goy friend Nick uh, will <laughs> explain a little bit more about Yeah, it. so basically what it is is uh, you see you're selling into Rosh Hashanah, you're obviously wanting to try to focus on your family, uh, you don't want to have positions out there to have to worry about, um, so it's obviously something you sell into, and then uh, you're you're buying Yom Kippur, you're getting back into things, uh, starting to come back with positions uh, with that holiday. So it's definitely, that's more of the reason, the general reason for, uh, you know, yeah. the sell Yom Kippur, or <laughs> sell Rosh Hashanah, yeah, no, buy Yom, Yom Kippur. Kippur. We had that run through with our Jewish colleagues. Yes, so. absolutely. Uh, finally, probably the most novel one, and maybe the most recent, is the Super Bowl indicator. Yes. Uh, which is pretty interesting. Nick, what does the Super Bowl this have to do? This is my favorite one by what? far. What does the Super Bowl have to do with the stock market? Yeah, so this was brought up in the 70s by Leonard Coppett, who was a sports writer. He actually said if, if the AFC, if an AFC team won the Super Bowl, it would signal a bear market, whereas if an NFC team won, it signaled a bull market. And obviously this has not held true this year. The Patriots won and uh, they're an AFC team and it's been a bullish market so far. So, you know, obviously uh, the Brady Trump triumvirate keeping the bull market strong. Yeah. <laughs> Although it should be said that 80% of the time it has held out. So, yes, surprisingly you know, enough. Sports fans and uh, stock market uh, traders, stay tuned. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe. And if you have any of your own stock idioms that uh, you think are pretty uh, surefire, let us know in the comments below. As always, I'm Chris Dioscalisi here with Nick Donato. Thanks for watching.